Hello and welcome back to the channel. Okay, in today's video, we're going to do a video I didn't really want to do. But, <clears throat> it's a video nonetheless I have to do. I owe it to you guys to be open, honest, and so on about the products I review. And this is not going to be a fun one for me. Um, in 2019, John Wick 3 was released to the public on the cinema. Approximately a year before then, um, the licenses went out to several airsoft company from Terran Tactical Innovations um, to produce. So two companies did produce the Combat Master from John Wick 3. One was Jag Precision, or Jag Arms now, um, and the other one was EMG International or EMG or EVIC Manufacturing Group. They obtained the license and went looking for a manufacturer, which they found in Armour Works. Now, I'm going to start this video with, one, I don't blame Armour Works. And if it comes across as I do, I don't. I think it's never the manufacturer's fault, per se. It's the license holder and the person selling those said rights. Um, basically, having been in business now for... 27 years myself, you know, working in and out, running several successful businesses, I can tell you now, it, it, licensing is mainly the uh, most expensive part of any, how would you say, product that you purchase. Now, like I say, I started with the Jag um, back in 2019. I remember traveling to my local site um, that I'm a member of and they have their own shop there. They had like 50 in the back. The gentleman pulled out five, all five of them had their outer barrels at the ejection port completely scratched where burrs of metal from the manufacturing hadn't been polished away and was just ripping the, the cheap paint off the outer barrel. Um, the fitment and finish was horrible. And then on the sixth one, I pulled it out and the ambidextrous safety was basically, well, let's say the ambidextrous side was in the box still. Um, and I sort of like left it and I thought, well, that's 150 quid uh, at that time, which is like just shy of $200 for a, for a pistol that's broken out the box. All looks crap, certainly not to the, the level of manufacturing that you guys out there would expect and that anyone would. Now, I know, like I say, at that point, I was like, no, I'm going to leave it a bit. I then went to sort of like Father's Day came in 2020 and I was gifted from my little daughter, the Combat Master from EMG. Um, and all I can say is it gets worse, guys. This gun re retails for £100 at the cheapest, more than the jag precision and that jag or the jag arms which you want to call it version and yet internally they've basically all feature the same as reviewed by airsoft mike and red wolf tv which is why i decided to go with the emg because i thought maybe they might have a bit of uh for the value i mean at the time 200 over 200 pounds for a pistol you know like 300 dollars. i think they were retailing out at the start for a combat master that was bloody high and you would expect a good sort of like return on that value or at least something that's better but alas we didn't now i know that armor works make good quality guns this gun here is like i say was retailing for around about 300 dollars at launch at launch armor works when they partnered up with a fairly decent licensing company came up with your canic tp9 combat elite which features better quality parts. You've got dual licenses from salient arms on the barrel to the canic on the slide and all that, and a completely redesigned internal. And yet that, even this at launch, was over a hundred pounds cheaper or over a hundred dollars cheaper than the EMG. So, very good gun with the Canic that has had over way more than 3,000 rounds through it, has never had a malfunction, never had a problem, cycles through multiple mags of BBs per one fill of gas, etc., etc., and is way cheaper. 
Yeah, this gun, you're paying for the license because of the John, John Wick movies, to be honest with you. I think this company here, EMG, avoid like the plague is what I'm going to tell you, but let's get there. So as we open the box, first of all, the box is really rigid and sturdy. It's a lovely quality you think you're going to get an apple product or something like that but no you get a cheap ass injection or vacuum molded plastic in there whatever you call it all right you will get a certificate there's mine telling you that you have a john wick 3 sti combat master uh, parallel training device whatever that means there's your qr code if you want to have a look at that it tells you with your registration you get your sti Owner's manual, which is fine, it's adequate, it does the job. To be honest, this this manual and the one that comes with the Jaguar are identical. And then you get your gun. Now, the keen eye would already notice there's a problem with mine. Let's bring that back. Something to do around this area. Yeah, mine's gold. Because out the box, upon doing what I'm doing now, I took it out of its poly bag which is just cheap poly, there wasn't even that much oil on the gun. And lo and behold, this is how it came. Now I've in, installed a muzzle adapter because I run a tracer on mine. Um, that does not come with it. But there you go. First of all, this was the problem. Um, out the box, just under here, there, there was the other half of it hanging in my box. Now this is supposed to be a very, very, how would you say, high-end product but lo and behold it's not so of course I go on the website so find out that Marui are not compatible with armor works or we for a hundred percent so you better to buy an armor works and extra safety so I did the only ones that you could find at the time was gold again lockdown and all the rest now that was your first problem so of course I reply replace that the second issue was the magazine. Have you noticed um, there's no extended button? Why? Because on the second insert of this magazine, the part here in the middle had cracked because again, it was injection molded, die cast, whatever you want to call it. Um, I think the uh, in, in the real steel world, you call it MIM parts, um, just snapped in half. So I had to purchase a CNC steel one to replace it. These are parts that should be Detriment. These are the heart of the gun. The general controls, the internals, they're the things that you should stick the money in, not the externals. But this was all about the externals. and That's EMG's motive, I guess. Now, the stippling felt a little bit more smoother on this than the Jag. I will give them that. But that's not always a good thing, especially when you're dealing with firearms. You want something that can give you a good purchase and grip. Um, this does feel very smooth. Now, of course... Another thing with Armour Works and their uh, high capper parts with this gun for some reason. If I was to just prep the gun. On the left side, normal right-handed use. Nice. Yeah, right? On the left-handers, you can suddenly see you've got this lovely slot. You pull it all the way up, about 4 mil, and then you'll get it. Still works, but sometimes under recoil, it can lift your safety up and put it into a locked state. The other downside, apart from the magwell, which I've already spent, remember this is a $300 gun and I've already spent now another, uh, with postage, about $65 on a, you know, ambidextrous safety and a mag release. But another thing I noticed, if I, let's open the mag and I'll show you, with the mag inserted, was it's not guaranteed to lock open on an empty mag with the WE. It, for some reason, hates Armour Works's only, I say WE, but it's the same thing, because these mags are identical to WE. So you insert it, you hear it positive click. Oh, look. It takes one or two slides to go. Why is that? Well, the main reason, if we take that back out, we drop that and we put it back. Can you hear that? It's like proper click, click. The detent here that holds the slide stop is so such a sharp material that it absolutely ate the internal part of here because this is just die cast, cheap die cast metal or pop metal as we say in the industry, bad. Now this gun barely 
has, um, I would say about 2,000 rounds total. And as you can see already, this is supposed to have been anodized on the barrel. That is not anodized. That is just really poor quality for an outer barrel. Okay, and it's not only there, but it goes round the end. You can see the paint just come off. It is absolutely scored. Now I thought, well, that can't be that bad, can it? It really cannot be that bad, you know? But again, after one magazine through, the rear sight fell off. Apparently, the screw had backed itself out. So I had to thread lock that in place. Now it's solid. But these are works that the user are doing that they shouldn't have to. On a brand new $300 gun, you shouldn't be doing that. Now the real differences between this and the Jag, yes, you can see the two-tone sort of like black effect, the gloss and the matte finish. But also on this variant, it has two things. You've got the STI Texas flag here, and you've got your EMG serial code, which should match, mine does, and a 2011 stamp there. That's it. Other than the two-tone effect here, everything else internally is virtually identical. And um, you're paying $100 more, £100 sterling more, to get this version over the um, cheaper Jag version. Now, if you're going to save some, some money, I'd get the Jag and just spend the money, the £100 you saved, on actually doing it up to be a good gun. Now, before I take this down, let's let's see what groupings we can get, shall we? Let's actually take it outside, give it a couple of shots at a target, get some chronograph results, and let's, let's, let's sort of like put this thing to bed, shall we? I'm going to drop the hammer there, and we'll, we'll, let's, let's get that done. Okay, I'm using green gas and 0.2 gram BBs. Let's put five through. Okay. All right, so we got a nice power out of there. Let's uh, put a target in and let's see what groupings we get. I'll take it back to 15 meters, which is your CQB environment, and let's see. That is pretty terrible. Okay, so now that we've chronoed the gun, let's have a look at what we've got. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight hit the target, and the other two went off somewhere wide. Now I have zeroed it, it's shooting flat, but for some reason the it, it just seems to favor the upper left. Uh, if I take any more of the hop off, it would just drop BBs out. Um, as for uh, FPS, well, let's have a read. So let's get the the, the low down. So we have an average of 343 there, which is not bad on a full mag, but you won't get that after. That's usually like your first 15 shots. After that, it will go down to the mid, I would say, 320s, 330s, thereabouts as an average. Now, one thing's for sure, like I say, when the gun went through, it didn't lock back properly. Um, I had to do it myself and clear the gun. Um, but yeah, I mean, this gun just it, it exudes like it's beautiful to look at. I mean, we all love the Combat Master and John Wick films, but it just seems just horrible. I mean, let's see if we can strip it down for you. I mean, let's take this crappy when you can see here how much it's eating away at the die cast for that cheap part. You shouldn't have to pay for it, but we did. Obviously, it's just a high capper. It's a standard armor works. I mean, you can see where the mock um, striking pin actually has dinted. That's actual dint. That's not a thing. It's a proper dint. And now it's eating away here on the hammer, if you can 
see that properly you can see how it's eating away as it hits the back here there's no buffing to it or buffer to it or come like a little bit of a thing as you can see you got my I don't know if we can get that in there but you've got my steel um, mag release in there which is better I mean they did give you a really how can I say this like a really strong striker in there which is great I'm not going to you know, diss that, the frame itself is, it, it's like that's the best part of the gun, is the frame and the slide itself. As you can see inside, I've not bothered even cleaning it in a thousand rounds, but hey, um, you can see you've got your um, Armour Works standard nozzles and so on. And here's where they went a little bit weird. This is supposed to be a steel guide rod, right? It's a bit magnetic. But tell me, does stainless steel do this? I mean, I live in the UK and we're famous uh, from Sheffield. But let's have a look. Oh, look, this is not stainless steel. This is just some magnetic metal that, um, you know, people have sort of like bothered with, if you know what I mean. Like treated with nickel, I think that is, like a plating on it. And it is just eating itself off, you know. And it, it's just, it's not professional anymore. Now there is a little grub screw here that we're going to need to check if it needs tightening. Let's have a look. Spin that around. Oh, there it comes. So if we flip that back round, come on. And we get that little uh, grub screw up. There it is. We should be able in the box they do supply you with the Allen key for this grub screw because it is a dual part guide rod oh great you know it's a two part guide rod which just ask Mac from uh, military arms he hates them I agree but it's like it's because it's rotating inside we're going to need to re-tighten that back down now this has been thread locked this really has been threadlocked, but it just don't feel like it. Other than that, it's a standard high capper hop chamber and so on. Internals. So all the normal armor work parts will fit. As you can see, just not nice quality. I mean, you look at the DOI, you had a rotating um, roll pin around this that was steel that would give it some rigidity so that the main arm can still be a, of a lower quality, but well, the wrong word quality, but a lower type of hardness material. You know, I mean, that's nice. And like I say, your trigger is plastic, which for a $300 gun, it's just stupid. And this gun, for some reason, actually prefers Tokyo Marui high capper mags. You know, why do I say that? Again, oh look, straight away, Slide locks back. How many times you want to do it? It's going to do it. And the mags come out very easily. They're not jammed in. But look at that. Oh, look. This is an empty mag. You have to go there, hold it, and push itself, and then it'll hold it. It's just... This is not $300. This is a... I mean, Jag got it right, I guess, with $150. This is pathetic. You've got very average chronoing results for the type of gun. I mean, don't forget, this is a 5.7 inch um, barrel gun. This is a full, like, say, competition length gun. You know, and it's like you've just got substandard parts. You know, you can, the, the metal of the slide, you can see it eating itself after so much. And, you know, they're supposedly the best part of this gun that you get, you know? It's like, no, I don't want to tear them a new one because I know it's not Armour Works' fault. The problem is, is EMG paid too much to Terran Tactical Innovations and STI or Staccato. And I know why they changed it from STI because it sounds too much like a sexual transmitted infection. Um, so they went to another female part and called it a oh, problem. And that's the... Um, you know, staccato, or if you, which sounds like a bloody lady's shoe. But, um, yeah, at the end of it all, it's just a case of, I don't know. You know, is it worth it? Hell no. There are better high cappers out there. The DOR from Tokimaru is better in every way. 
it may be a polymer slide, but there are metal ones out there if you wish. And they, even those are not going to damage or break your gun like this is eating itself. I mean, look at the finish on the screws. You, they look white, but they should be black. But that's just, like I say, holding the gun, you know, and manipulating it with your, with your gloves on or with just bare hands for most of it. Because it's never really, other than, like I say, about, I think I've used it for five games. And outside of that, it's been plinking in my, my garden and that, that's it, you know? And this is the, start, the the quality it's in. We know what they're capable of. They are, cap you know, Armour Works are capable of producing a really good pistol at a really affordable price. It's, you know, it's not Armour Works. It's the cost of the licensing. The hundred dollars that, that they charge you for the STI license and the, what's it called? The Terran Tactical license, you know. And then they manufacture it. Now, Evic went on to, to prove my point. Every license thing that they've done has failed or been ripped apart with problems because they made a second version of this with a steel slide. It could barely get through two magazines before the cool, cool down was so bad that it didn't work. And that gun was $500. They then made a version two of this, which has a fixed, I would say, compensator to the lower frame. Everything else is exactly the same as the, this Combat Master. And because of that, same problems, same quality crap out the box. And that's another 330 to $350 gun. You know, we shouldn't be paying $300 and going, oh, it's all right. You know, in today's economic climate, in today's world, $300, it isn't all right. You know, EMG made the Hudson 9. It failed. You know, again, 250 pounds UK. That's $330 at the time for a Hudson 9. In the real steel, it failed after eight months, you know? And in Airsoft, it failed on a DOA on arrival, if you want to go dead on arrival. And then they went to the Caltech RDB. And Caltech's a really cool brand, you know? It's, it, they do really cool stuff. I mean, it, you know, it may be plastic, it may be problematic, but you don't mind because it's something new. But yet, because they got Aries to put in their cheap internals my god it was like shoddily internals they don't last do you know what i mean and it's like this just seems to be emg's thing they make it so that they get the maximum back for the license which is the only thing that they have inside in as you say skin in the game and it is the licensing it's the manufacturer who then has to go well what's the rest of the budget per pistol oh crap i've got a hundred dollars to put basically a three hundred dollars worth of parts in it and we can't do it. So they just put substandard. They put MIM parts like the um, slide stop release, the the safety, the magazine, the trigger is just plastic. And it's not a nice, it's gritty and not a nice take up. The sights at the rear look nice, but they're just MIM parts type things, you know, multiple mass manufactured parts. And in a normal world, they would be hand fitted and, and fixed so that every gun would work. But in this, they're not. They're just thrown together and hope that they work. But the vast majority don't. I mean, even the trigger guard is plastic here. This is not metal. The metal part is the slide. This is screwed on inside through the actual grips, all part of here. This is metal, the um, extended magwell, whatever you want to call it on it, the flared magwell, which is nice. It has the STI logo on the back, but again, it just sounds wrong. You know, it's sad because John Wick was a great movie and sadly their airsoft pistols are just absolute garbage so yeah guys and girls everyone out there in the internet world stay clear do not buy the AMG products stay well away from them treat Uvic like they've got the plague in that respect you know because doing that teaches them to stop trying to rip people off straight away to get the money back instantly and say, hey, maybe we've got to sell three or four times that amount over the next few years to recover it. But it'll be worth it in the end because the parts we put in it are guaranteed to be really good. And then they do become good. And I think that's where the money is. It's where it all lies, you know, in, in how we spend and being decent with it, you know. 
Because, like I say, Armor Works make really good guns. The Canic was a licensed product, a dual license, just like this. Really well. Compatible with real steel parts. It runs great. It shoots great. It's consistent. It's accurate. More, it's weird. It has a shorter barrel, and yet it's more accurate than that. Go figure, eh? But, um, again, like I say, this is a video I didn't want to make, and I don't like making negative videos. I like positivity, because Airsoft is freaking cool. But, sadly, companies like this need to be called out and people need to be well aware. Stay well away. Unless you want a project gun. This really does remind me of, um, what was it, Springfield's new Prodigy, which took on the Staccato and failed. You know, it was, a, what was it, $1,400 cheaper, but yet you're going to spend double that to put the gun into a decent amount of well-working and well-reliable. It's not worth it. Just buy a Staccato at that time, you know. Or a, another brand that's better. Anyway, I'd like to thank everyone who watches my videos. You're all amazing. If you've got this far, leave in the comments. What's your experience with your EMG products and Combat Masters? Have you had a better time than me? Um, because like I say, I've gone through so many and I just don't feel it's worth it. But if you have, I'd love to hear from it, you know. This channel is for you guys out there, for everyone who loves airsoft, video games, you name it. All the cool man child stuff, I'm here for it, you know. And if there's anything you want to see, let me know again. Just hit me up in the comments. I'll be keeping my eye open. You guys are awesome, and I've been the middle-aged gamer, and I'll see you in the next one.